All right, let's jump right into vases. I'm throwing with about three pounds of clay, which is quite a bit more than just one pound if that's what you're used to. Make sure that you're pulling on it with your uh, non-dominant hand as well as leaning into it. When you drop the hole, make sure you compress the base as much as you can. Uh, larger forms are more prone to cracking, and so compressing the base really well is important. Make sure that you're anchoring during your pulls. If you have separated hands or your elbows are not on your body, chances are the clay is going to push you around and it's going to get off center really bad. Third pull, you can start shaping your form. The fun thing about vases is the sky is kind of the limit. You can do whatever shape you want. If you are going to bring the neck in, however, I suggest leaving a little bit extra clay towards the lip just so you can pull that back in. Use a metal rib on the outside. 90 degree angle, clear off all the slip and refine your shape. And I use this little cheat of a chamois. They use them for charcoal drawing, uh, but it's great for pottery to smooth out the lip. You can also just use a sponge though. I like to do quick modified feet on most of my vases. Trimming big stuff is kind of difficult. So just doing a quick pass with the wood knife on the bottom makes it nice and easy. Make sure you sponge out any water that's left inside, smooth out the side, Cut it off and you're done. Now, next up, we're gonna do the pitcher. And so for a pitcher, it's pretty much the same process. We're gonna center evenly. Coning up helps. Drop the hole, open the base. Again, don't forget to compress. The main difference with pitchers is that we're going to leave a good amount of clay on the lip so that we can pull a spout. Um, it's very similar to how we pull handles uh, in that you're compressing the clay and pulling it out, but we're just gonna do it on the lip. So that top section, that top inch and a half or so, it's quite a bit thicker than the rest of the body. Third pull, we're evening everything out, getting the rest of our height, but backing off on the pressure just at the lip. You can go ahead and start shaping. When you throw a pitcher, you want to think about the ergonomics of the vessel, meaning how well is it going to pour or how easily is it going to pour liquid. Uh, now, if it's just decorative, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but if you do want it to be functional, you want it to be light and easy to pour. Most of the time, that just means straight edges or gentle curves. If anything is undercut too much, it's going to be difficult. All right, now for that spout, all you're gonna do is wet your hands pretty well and then just give the lip a little pinch in about a three inch, four inch section. And you're just pulling that thin to a sharp taper. Then you can either take a chamois or a wet sponge, smooth out the lip a bit, very, very gently. And then you'll take three fingers. So two on one hand, one on the other, and then just push that spout through and then smooth it out one last time. And last but not least, we're gonna throw a bottle. Bottles for me personally are more difficult than other tall forms, mostly because you have to really control how much clay is on the neck, on the top of the pot, while still throwing the body relatively thin. It's important to really compress the base on bottles because as soon as you throw that neck, you can't get your hand back in. Good undercut on every pull and leave a good chunk of clay on the neck. Go ahead and shape the body. Remember, if you have a big bulging body, uh, the shoulder is going to be quite thin and you really need to be careful not to overstrain the clay. You can see I'm kind of struggling with that a bit. Then we're going to collar in the neck, just meaning take some wet hands, 
and start to pinch it in. Support it on the inside and then do a little pull. Then collar in and then pull. And it's the process of collaring in and pulling that's going to elongate the neck. Oftentimes you'll get a little wobble in the neck. That's totally fine. Just take a needle tool, trim it off, and then just continue collaring and pulling. Eventually you can take a rib, smooth everything out, and then you can uh, get your finger in there or a throwing stick on the inside. And that will allow you to continue to pull and compress that neck. Again, trim the base with a knife, thin it out a bit, and there's our three forms.